Aleluia, 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 Aleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call alleluia 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 the lord be with you a reading from the holy gospel according to mark Some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to ensnare him in his speech. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. You do not regard a person's status, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not? Or should we not pay? Knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me a denarius to look at. They brought one to him and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They replied to him, Caesar's. So Jesus said to them, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. They were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They were utterly amazed at him because they did not know he was God. Should it surprise us that God gives the perfect answer? that God knows what he's talking about. In that little Alleluia Antiphon, enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to this call. So the atheists who would point to the Bible and see such a passage, they would say, how silly is that? Anybody knows that our heart does not have any eyes. And so the Bible is not correct. It's just silly. Well, it's because they don't understand what the heart means. In Latin, the word is cor, in Spanish, corazón, which comes from our English word, core. So the heart is the core of our being. In a week and a half or so, a couple of weeks, we'll be celebrating the, the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And it's not a devotion to Jesus' blood pump. It's devotion to the essence or core of his being. So when we say, let us see from the core of our being, other faith traditions or religions might call it the mind's eye. It's if we recognize all that is true, good, and beautiful, it animates everything that we do. The story of Justin Martyr, as I said and mentioned earlier, is he was born of pagan parents, became and studied philosophy, and wanted to know the truth about God or the gods. So he studied all these philosophical systems and applied himself to answer that question, why? Well, he came to conclude that the Christian way was the true philosophy. He was unwilling to even have any pretense of idolatry. In fact, he and his companions chose to die as rather than deny their faith. The sad thing in today's world is we are trapped in idolatry in many ways and we fail to grasp it. We 
place more attention and more concern on maybe financial security or job security or maybe anything else about keeping up with the Joneses. That seems to be more important than just having our allegiance to God. There's nothing wrong with having nice things or doing nice things or having a good job or work towards job security or even try and build financial resources. There's nothing intrinsically sinful about any of that. The question we have to challenge ourselves is, is that more important to us than God? At the heart and the structure of society is a stable family. When the families are stable, societies thrive. But our culture and our country is moving in a direction that there is real no definition for any family. It's just any person who is living in a household. They've reduced the idea of family to just any household, whether it be a single person, two people living together, whatever it might be. Well, that's today's family. That's not what a family is. A family is a community of persons that love each other and strive to act for the other's well-being. And the more we conform our hearts and our minds to such an idea of a family, a father, mother, and children who work together to, to build society, help it grow, help it produce new humans, all these beautiful things that is truly God's plan and his will for us, for those who are married. So let us just pray that we will have the courage of Justin Martyr, that we don't worry about the status of what other people think. You see, this was the perfect trap because if Jesus would say, don't pay, the people would love that. <laughs> they say, oh great, he's on the, the zealot side. We can get out from underneath these crushing oppressive taxes and we can rally behind Jesus and throw these Romans out. If he says, pay the temple tax, then all the people would be upset and say, oh, he must not be the Messiah because he doesn't care about our suffering. He doesn't care about how we're being oppressed by these taxes. But Jesus is always trying to help us. Let's look at what matters. Give to the world what the world desires and give to God what God desires. As I mentioned in the Sunday homily, how do we discern the confusion that seems to be reigning in the church? What do we look towards? I would argue that the side that seems to be focused on material things by just giving stuff to people or trying to help people feel content in whatever they decide is their own family or encouraging people to focus on the ways of God and the ways of loving their neighbor. In other words, it's not about what I can get. The Christian is always consumed with the idea, what can I give? What can I give to God and what can I give to neighbor out of the great gratitude of my heart for all that God has given to me? And fundamental among those things is life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples. We pray to the Lord. For Jackie Grabarik, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For an end of this pandemic, Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the world leaders that have failed to grasp the existence of God in any meaningful way, that their hearts may be moved to recognize how society is so beneficial when it's ordered towards God's principles and his natural law, we pray to the Lord. Lord okay. That all corruption be, may be uncovered 
and those who are responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 